In our past, leaders were thoughtful and decisive, while troopers displayed selfless devotion to duty. Leaders and their soldiers cooperated to create a unit that was reliable during war. The regiment's courage and valor was recognized by the entire army. During the Vietnam War, the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment epitomized adaptability, resilience, flexibility, and courage. The regiment contended with the need to expand the tactical situation and innovatively employed armored forces in dense jungle. The 11th ACR implemented the Armored Cavalry Assault Vehicle in novel ways and developed methods quickly. The regiment became a feared unit as it conducted the interdiction, isolation, and destruction of the enemy. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, leaders provided focus and vision to their troopers. Combined with their situational understanding and the cognizance of the social and political climate, leaders acted with wisdom. This provided the foundation for the patience required to conduct numerous reconnaissance and surveillance missions. Troopers showed that they were stewards of their profession, constantly showing courage in the face of adversity, executing multiple raids as part of their mission. Simultaneously, they showed the ability to prioritize the needs of others, performing reconstruction and development projects for the local community, and leading garbage cleanup projects for the local populace. The 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment has shown that we are a unit capable of adapting to the most difficult challenges, regardless of the difficulties posed or the time and resources needed. We carry that legacy over to 2023. The Black Horse mission, in addition to increasing our own lethality, is to train other units to succeed in the first fight of the next war. To this end, we've continued to develop the RTU by probing their weaknesses. The regiment has continued to refine our ability to replicate the threats we face in Eastern Europe, utilizing drones to consistently identify and destroy brigade talks and disrupt control nodes. This past year, I've had the privilege of leading troopers through seven rotations in which my fellow commanders and I honed our skills and maintained our combined arms advantage. My platoon leaders and squad leaders consistently displayed that they are competent and capable of controlling their troopers and effectively implementing graphics and phase lines. I appreciate the regiment and the squadron's recent initiatives to strengthen our proficiency with individual weapon systems and small unit tactics through the increased focus on live fire training and sticks exercises. This combination of large and small scale maneuver positions the 11th ACR to be ahead of other units in terms of readiness when the regiment is called to fight. When soldiers depart the 11th ACR, the skills and knowledge that they bring with them will increase the readiness of the Army as a whole. The Black Horse Regiment and its troopers stand ready to execute the dual mission of training brigade combat teams as a free-thinking and lethal opposing force while standing prepared to fight and win as a deployable unit should our nation call. The regiment has executed holistic multi-echelon training to accomplish this dual mission. The 11th ACR focused its attention on building readiness within its crews and teams. By pursuing mastery of our weapon systems, vehicle platforms, and small unit tactics, we sharpen ourselves to be ready to win the first battle of the next war. In addition to all the rotations we carried out throughout the year, we executed tank gunnery, squad and team live fires, Miklik range, and MORTEP, among others. At the operational level, we continued to replicate the looming threat that our future adversaries may pose. We were purposeful in attacking the RTU at their most vulnerable times, such as during transitions. We were intent on providing an asymmetric advantage to replicate the real-world occurrences arising in Eastern Europe. As we trained in larger formations out in the box, I was pleased with the flexibility of our leaders to transition between the offense and the defense as required and their willingness to adapt to the complexities of the mission. During our last rotation of the year, I was most impressed by the adaptability of our forces when, with little notice, we transitioned from a deliberate defense to attacking a numerically superior force while executing two simultaneous breaches. I got troops. I got troops. Two range. Two hundred meters. On the way. Target. Target. Table index. Index table. Table index. Tank. Low table up. Range. Come on. Range. A thousand meters. On the way. Go. Drop it down. Target. Drop it. Continue to bounce. I believe there is no alternative to studying hard and training harder. 
By laying the foundations of communication amongst us, we were further capable of going beyond the expectation by reinforcing each other in times of need. I was inspired by my crew's resiliency that was brought forth by our crew's ability to fail and learn together. It was a true David and Goliath story. Our greatest strength as a crew was that we were open-minded. We did not over-rely on one individual set of skills in a competition with different sections. Similar to many other endeavors, we quickly deduced that the success at the Sullivan Cup laid in working together to utilize each other's strengths. We were selected in accordance with our different attributes and we appreciated the diversity and strengths of each crew member. As our crew aspired to do well in the competition, we learned the qualities which helped us earn our place in the top three. Humility allowed us to bind our crew together and helped us adapt to one another. Humility allowed us to push beyond the biases associated with our crew, coming from a unit associated with maneuver heavy training, not the traditional armor unit. From my years in the Army, troopers who aspire to shoulder more responsibility and show adaptability reflect the authority embedded in the ranks they wear. We promote our troopers based on potential. When our troopers realize their potential, their skills as individuals become an example to men and women they will lead, train, and win alongside. With greater experience, a trooper must be able to influence subordinates to achieve personal growth and make decisions that are both moral and ethical. The nature of our job requires us to be vigilant in order to stay in the fight and bring our brothers and sisters home after the battle has been won. The gravity of our role as the opposing force means training soldiers that are potentially going into harm's way. This compels our troopers to be the most lethal, adaptive, and ferocious fighting force. Every single day, a Black Horse Trooper faced down their adversary, whether on a mountainside or the center of a city. This year, the Black Horse Regiment demonstrated a high standard of professionalism during training, rotation, and experimentation. Our troopers showcased themselves as adaptive, creative, ruthless opponents to eight rotational training units.